again from Tanga. This is our fourth week, it's hard for us to believe that, but it is, of doing under the banda. And really, we try to sequence what we're saying in, in a natural way of discussion and bringing some thoughts to you with regard to our responsibility as Christians. Once we've become a Christian, the responsibility that's placed upon us in the first week, we looked at, uh, at the situation of repentance and how we move into a place of confession after that, that we don't have to keep uh, repenting to, uh, you know, to, to, in a deep, deep way every time we do something wrong, that really we need to acknowledge it. We're in a place of grace, we're in a place where we can acknowledge and, and confess it. Scripture tells us in 1 John 1, 9 to confess our sins, and if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's a fantastic verse, isn't it? 1 John 1, 9, all unrighteousness. But it's in the confession and the acknowledgement, not the repetition of deep repentance. Second week we looked at, um, in fact we got rained off, but by the time we'd been rained off, we'd had the chance to look at the three main commandments that, that the Lord verbally gave to, to, to us as his church while he was on earth. One, love God with all your heart, mind, strength and soul. Love your neighbour as yourself. And love one another, Jesus said to the church, as I have loved you. And there are clauses on all of those, those commands. They're commands, they're not requests, they're commands. And then last week we looked at the fact of how it's easy to spot people of other religions, generally speaking, because they, they wear a certain kind of dress. Uh, attire that is, um, you know, in, in Christianity, it's hard to spot another Christian by those means because we don't. We wear, you know, we, we're free to wear what we want, etc. Um, et apart from a cross, or if you're a clergyman or none or something. So we, we we looked at the the responsibility we have to wear love. That that even a smile, um, the different aspects of, of our life, our attitude, we're supposed to wear it so that people who look at us see that we're different. And uh, we're going to move on from that today. And I'm going to uh, hand over to Deb to do that. So, Deb, over to you. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Thanks again for tuning in. Um, we appreciate your comments and your opinions on what we spoke about. It really helps feed us and yeah. with what we can talk about the week after. So we're going to do that because we had some great comments on the uniform, for want of a better word, that different religions may choose to wear what to show the world, to show us that they belong to a certain kind of religion. Mm -hmm. And someone pointed out that, that actually doesn't generally mean anything. Just because of what you're wearing doesn't mean that you, you are living as you should, mm -hmm. as uh, connected to your faith. They just wear it. But what it does do is that for people who are outside of that faith, when they see a person dressed in a certain way, you get an expectation of mm -hmm. they should be living a certain way or they must be living a certain way because they yeah. wear that uniform. And we had an experience of it just a few weeks ago. We went to stay somewhere overnight. We were walking into the dining room and we saw this nun and she was in our path so there was no way that we could have avoided each other. And she literally just put her head down and turned away and didn't acknowledge us at all. Didn't say hello, didn't say good morning, nothing. And we both commented on it, didn't we? We both said, I think I said it, we both thought it. You cannot wear an outfit like that and not say hello. Mm. That was our comment, yeah, wasn't it? Was, absolutely. And if she'd just been in civvies, we perhaps would have said, well, she might have said hello, but, but she wasn't. She was dressed in this uniform that gives me an expectation that yeah. she should have been different yeah. because she was in, in that dress. Mm. So what does that mean for us? Once we become, once we go public with our faith, even though we don't wear something, once people know that we're believers in Christ and we say we're Christians, they're watching us. Whether you know it, whether you like it or not, they are people are watching because you've yeah. confessed and you've made it, you may have given your testimony, your baptism or whatever, you've said, I am a Christian. Therefore there are expectations. And no one's saying that we should be perfect, but once we've gone public with that, we would say mm -hmm. Because of what we spoke about last week about being under the law, the royal law, that every Christian, every believer has a responsibility Absolutely. 
to wear love and to be a good person in their community, in their job, in their family. And sadly, there's too many Christians who are known to be miserable, bitter, twisted, and not happy. Do you know any? <laughs> and that's not good enough. And the day in which we live, it is definitely not good enough. And so Christians, we have a responsibility. And a, a chapter in the Bible I was studying this week was in 1 John 1, verse 6. It says, if we claim to walk with God and walk in darkness, we lie to ourselves and we're not living in the truth. And I want to, before we discuss it a little bit more, is, to, is those words, if we claim... If you claim to be a follower of Christ, what should that look like? Well, uh, I think it starts on your demeanour, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, we have a responsibility. So, yeah. You know, sometimes there's a place, obviously, where we show our feelings through our face if it's not going so well. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, a smile to begin with uh, does a wonderful thing. You know, it, it can yes. light up a room. Mm -hmm. It can make a person feel comfortable with you, you know, if you, if you, just, just by smiling, but it's, I think the key word is being responsible for who you belong to, yeah. who as you are, mm -hmm. and the fact that the Bible says we're ambassadors, and, and that we're, we're written, we're, we're letters that are being read, you know, that's how scripture puts it, and we use so people yeah. observe you, and, um, and, and, and look at how you deal with situations in life and look at how you how you react to things as well and the, that whole aspect of it isn't it yeah and i think the other religions that we that we've mentioned in the past couple of weeks when they when they join their particular faith and they wear that uniform they have no choice in some of the things that they have to do mm. so we mentioned that the muslims have to, to be pray, devout to be devout, to be devout, yeah. devout yeah. of course to pray five times a day, mm -hmm. when Catholics would go to confession every week, that's what they're yeah. required to do, and that's, yeah. their, that's what they're expected to do. Mm -hmm. And they have, if, like you say, if they want to be devout and in their way please God, then they have to do those things. Mm -hmm. And I think what, what the church has to wake up to realize is that if we want to honor God, then we have no choice either in living out this royal law. There is no get out clause, oh I don't want to do that, I don't want to love you because you've hurt me, I'm mm. not going to love God with all my heart. If you take that attitude and you take that path, your Christianity is going to be less than what Jesus died for. And obviously today is one of the greatest days in the calendar of the Christian church we're celebrating the resurrection. Yeah. But you can't, if you want to be honourable and devout to use that word, which is a great word, there is no choice. You can't say, I don't want to follow those commands. We absolutely have to. Well, they're commands, aren't yeah. they? And we, mm -hmm. in so many ways, we've documented that because, because command and good idea and request is, um, is a totally choice. different thing. You yeah, a choice. request gives you a choice, really. mm -hmm. command doesn't. And right. Command right. means there's consequence mm -hmm. if you don't. And we looked at the fact that in Romans 8, it, it, it says that there's no, no, therefore, any condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. But it's a law. Yeah. It means there is a, if you don't keep the commands to love, there is consequence mm -hmm. to that. And it's, it's you know, I've been reading Deuteronomy this morning and, and it's about choices. God's speaking to the Israelites about choices and, and uh, the certain choices we may bring curses. It's not that God wants to curse you, it's just that it's a universal law, that's how it hit how it is. And and other choices we make will bring uh, blessing to our lives. And we've talked about that earlier today, haven't we? Mm -hmm. About asking God to reveal to us choices that we may be making that and that he's not happy with or, or any areas of our life that, that we're making wrong choices in. Yeah. Because we you know, we don't want to carry that into our future, do we? No, that's right. So, as we wrap up this week four, let's let's just ask you this question. If if you claim, if we claim, so if you're claiming today that you're a follower of Jesus Christ, 
Who's that person that you need to let go of? Who's that person that you need to forgive? Who's that person that you need to show agape to? Because every, probably every Christian on the planet has got someone that's hurt them. Because the enemy knows. The enemy heard those commands of Jesus. And so the way he gets at us is by Christians hurting one another. But if we claim to be followers of Christ, then we just have to go up in this area. And it's at that point that the world will know that we belong to him, like we said last week. What's the, what's the full verse there? It's worth the repeating. love that you have for one another. I love you. The agape. The agape you have for one another. That's how we'll know. There have been thousands of great programs going on this weekend. I've watched seen them on Facebook with brilliant presentations of the gospel. But that isn't what Jesus said the world would know us by. It is by agape that, that the world will know. If you don't claim to be a follower of Christ and you're watching this, then please let us help you make that transition if you like. Or ask us questions. Our contact details come up at the end of this video. We'd love to hear from you. If any of you have got any questions, under the bander is a place where you can ask them. Because only we will know who you are. Nobody else will know. Be anonymous. And we want to seek to try and help you answer the questions that are tough questions. So keep them coming. Keep your comments coming. Thanks for watching again this week. And a hand back to John just to close. And uh, just want to say thank you. We, we feel that we'd be the first to say we're, we're on a journey. We're probably still infants on that journey. But through our experience, and what we've studied obviously, but through the experience of our lives, the mistakes we've made ourselves, the fact of what we've got wrong, we've found some solutions out of that. And what Debbie said there about being able to help you, we feel we, feel we can, in, in yeah. plain understanding and, and in plain language, uh, understand certain aspects that affect our everyday lives. That's what, that's what we're trying to say there, that uh, you can write to us and we'd be more than glad to seek to help you and hopefully you could help us as well on this journey. It's not an easy journey, is it? But um, we've also got a, a new podcast out this week which deals with this subject in a bit more detail. So how, how could people get that podcast? If you just go to iTunes and look, search for Agape Life International, then it, they will come up at that point. And you can subscribe so every time there's a new one, you'll, you'll hear it. There'll be it. another new one this week. Yes, there is. You're going to do that. Yes. It's going to be great. I know, <laughs> I know the subject you're dealing with, so it's going to be great. Yeah. yeah. Guys, great to be able to uh, communicate this way. We lived in Tanzania, as m most of you know, uh, years ago. The communication literally was by letter alone at, at that point. And to be able to do this and interact and get feedback yes, is right. absolutely fantastic. And it, it, it does narrow the world, and particularly if, you, if you're doing something uh, for God overseas, it, it's literally changed our world, being able to communicate on Facebook, through our website, which Deb gave earlier, I think, and um, letters, any, anything at all. It's just marvellous to have that communication. And we want to tell you from our hearts, we love you, and, and uh, we, we want to see you blessed, we want to see you walk in blessing, because yeah. the scripture says this, that, that the blessing of God makes rich and it adds no sorrow. Amen. You will have no regrets about how you got to that place of blessing if you go God's way. It's what we're searching for, it's what we're, we're um, building our lives upon, that, that trust and that journey into that place that we can be blessed to be a blessing and we have a very big vision here. We want to we want to see that blessing reach out to so many people. So, God bless you. Thanks so much for listening. Do take advantage of other things that, that we can help you with. And, and if you contact us, we'd be glad to let you know the various ways that, that we feel we could help you. God Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Bye. Bye.